Hello everyone, round 8 of the Singfield Cup saw Alexander Grishuk facing off against Wesley So. And Grishuk plays f4, the bird's opening, and this is something that we rarely see at the top level. The commentators were joking that Grishuk might have overslept, so he wanted to play something less theoretical. And this might have caught Wesley off guard. So let's see how this game goes. Wesley plays knight to f6, we have knight to f3, b6, b3, so both sides want to fianchetto their bishops, bishop to b7, e3, g6, bishop to b2, bishop to g7, and here, uh, bishop to e2 or bishop to d3 by white is totally fine. But Grishuk decides to play g3, which is also quite solid, uh, with the idea of bishop to g2. Castles from Wesley, bishop to g2, c5, gaining space in the center, we have c4, uh, controlling the square, castles, sorry, d5, castles from white, and knight to c6. Here a normal developing move like knight to c3 uh, isn't so good because black can play d4, and well this knight has to go back, and after you capture, pawn captures, you can play knight to b4 as black. So you can see this knight uh, might jump here or into d3 in the future. And if, if, it goes to, if it goes to c2, e3 is a little bit weak. So uh, it's a bit uncomfortable for white in this position. So uh, if you actually capture the pawn, then here after the capture, queen takes and after the king moves, simply captures the bishop after king captures rook to d8 and there is some pressure here so although knight to c3 seems normal well it actually allows black to gain some initiative so instead of that uh, queen to e2 uh, from grishuk with the idea of supporting e4 in the future and here uh, instead of queen to e2 knight to e5 is also fine but queen to e2 from grishuk we have rook to c8 from Wesley, d3 supporting e4, and here Wesley plays the move d4. So e5 in this e4 in this position seems like a normal move, but this allows black to play knight to g4 and it can jump into the square. So you don't want to do that. So Grishuk here captures the pawn, he takes d4, we have knight takes d4, and a series of exchanges occur. And here, uh, Grishuk plays knight to a3 uh, with the idea of knight to c2 looking at this pawn. We have knight to d7 with the idea of posting the knight on c5. Knight to c2, knight to c5, so you can see uh, d3 is under a little bit of pressure. And this knight can't be easily kicked away because if you play b4, simply knight to a4 attacking the bishop. We have, queen, we have f5 from Grishuk, trying to stir something on the king's side. Queen to d7, and here g4 protecting this pawn. But this also opens up the king's side. b5 from Wesley, trying to start a minority attack on the queen's side. And here uh, Grishuk decides to trade his bishop for the knight, because the bishop on b2 isn't doing that much. So bishop to a3. a5 from Wesley trying to play b4, preventing the trade. So bishop captures, rook captures, and rook to e1, pressuring e7. We have uh, some pawn exchanges. g takes f5, g takes f5, and here rook captures on f5. At this point, Grishuk might be regretting move g4 earlier because uh, his king is a little bit exposed. We have rook captures on f5, queen, ch queen captures on f5, and queen f3 offering a queen trade. But Wesley doesn't want to, he plays queen to g5 uh, because he wants to take advantage of the exposed king, king to h1. We have king to h8, preparing room for rook g8. And here rook to g1, queen to h6, and queen to d5. So attacking this pawn. But Wesley doesn't bother defending it and he goes for activity, queen to d2. We have knight captures the pawn, queen captures a2, and here is something like knight to c6 would probably be more challenging for black. Uh, just looking at these two pawns, 
and also with ideas of spinning the knight to e5, looking at this pawn on f7. But queen to e4 uh, from Grishuk, and here Wesley could have played something like queen to f2, and this is probably the most challenging move in the position. So looking at this knight, the knight has to move, uh, attacking the bishop, so bishop goes to f6, and here white is uh, quite weak along this diagonal, so the queen always has to keep watch of this diagonal. And the plan here for black is simply to push his pawn, pawn down the board. If you play something like rook to g2, simply queen to c5. And this queen here just controls these pawns. You can't play d4 because this pawn simply falls. So just simply push the pawn, the pawn down the board. And this bishop on f6 also controls the queening square. So queen to f2 uh, probably is probably uh, the most challenging move for white to deal with. But here Wesley plays queen to b2, looking at this knight. Uh, and after knight to f5, we have bishop to e5, uh, threatening mate, so rook to g2, queen check, rook to g1, we have queen to b2, and a few repetitions of moves. And here uh, the players agreed to draw based on threefold repetition. The rest of the games today ended in a draw. Magnus was trying to push against Mamyadyarov, but unfortunately there just wasn't enough juice left in the position. So after eight rounds of play in the Singfield Cup, Fabiano Caruana still leads the tournament uh, by half a point. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, Please subscribe for more future content. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.